Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the new Danfoss RefTools app. So this app supersedes the older refrigerant slider app that was really popular in the field. A lot of us have used it to convert pressure to saturated temperature. It has about 2 million downloads, but now with the new RefTools app, it has six of their popular apps all in one. It also has full landscape mode and full portrait mode. And you can get it over in the Google App Store and also the Apple App Store. And if you click on the icon right there, it'll take you right to the last part that you were in. So we're gonna go back and here you see your main menu. So we're just gonna go back into the refrigerant slider. Another thing that I like about this is they have a web version as well. So I like to use that in the classroom for teaching purposes. So you can put it right up on the projector and, and discuss a certain refrigerant. So now I'm gonna take it in for an up close view of this. So let's enter into the refrigerant slider app. And right here at the top, you see we have R4 Tanay. And over on the left hand side here, you can see what the R4 Tanay is made up of. And it's R32, so it's 50% of that and 50% R125. You can see that the class of refrigerants is HFC, so it's a hydrofluorocarbon. So it's not like R22, which is a HCFC, hydrogen, chlorine, fluorine, carbon. Uh, the safety group is A1, so it's at the lowest possible amount of toxicity and flammability. And we can check on the, the bubble or the dew. You can see that it doesn't change much depending on when you go to bubble or dew. As well, you can go to the absolute pressure or the gauge pressure. So let's just say we enter 118 PSIG. You see it reads 40 degrees. We can go to the temperature and we can just change the temperature say to 38 degrees and you see that that equals a pressure of 114. So that's the saturated temperature say in the middle of the evaporator coil if you read the pressure on the vapor line of 114.3. Uh, over here on the right hand side you see the slider the actual slider so say your evaporator coil was 35 degrees you see the temperature for the pressure is 108 PSIG. You see it says 107.8. Let's look at another refrigerant, R407C, and you can also select your favorite refrigerants in here and have them uh, pop up over at the top. And right now we're doing bubble. Let's just change that to do. Say we read a, uh, let's just go for a 40 degree evaporator coil. And that's showing you that the pressure would be 63 PSIG. So say the pressure was 75 DSI, and we see a temperature in the middle of the evaporator coil of 47.68. So anyway, you can discuss all this type of stuff, maybe with your, your helper in the truck, you can show them with the app, or in the classroom, you can show all these things. You can use a slider over here on the right-hand side to increase your uh, pressure or increase your temperature, and you can see your correlating number right there. So now let's go to the low GWP tool. And if we have a unit where we say, say the old refrigerant was R22 and say it had an R22 TXV, this low GWP tool is going to recommend the adjustment on the thermostatic expansion valve on the spring on the bottom there. So say the retrofit refrigerant is say R438A. It's suggesting that you do a half turn clockwise to adjust the superheat. And the reason for that is maybe you have a slightly higher superheat when you have R438A in there compared to R22. So say if you had R22 in the system, maybe the superheat was say 14 degrees. Well now, now that you have R438A in there, you have a, a superheat of 18 degrees. Well, if you adjust the, the TXV, if it has an adjustable TXV, you can make the system more efficient. Now, I also will say that for air conditioning systems, a lot of thermostatic expansion valves are non-adjustable. Uh, so that's that's another thing to consider as well. This tool right here is also going to tell you whether it's a good idea to replace a uh, refrigerant with another refrigerant such as R22. Say we look in here for a replacement for R22. So say we select a refrigerant such as R417C, you can see that that's not recommended to be able to replace R22 with. And so right here it says you can't use it for a low pressure system, medium pressure system, or a high pressure system. And it also shows you the capacity changes are just way too high. It's just not going to work for that particular scenario. Uh, let's find another refrigerant such as R422B. 
it's saying the capacity, you're going to lose some capacity if you were to put R422B in. And so for a high pressure system, it looks like you're going to lose quite a bit of capacity. And it's also saying to, to increase the, the efficiency of the system, you should adjust the superheat three quarters of a turn clockwise. So compared with the R438A, that's only half a turn clockwise. And the capacity loss for a, say, a high pressure system is less. Now let's go to the spare parts finder. So we're going to click on that. You can just click on your model number here. But what we're going to do is we're just going to go to the product type. And in this case, let's click on the condensing units. And let's select this. All right. So this is going to show you a lot of the different parts that are in that system. So if you need a replacement part for that system, it's going to make it real easy for you to be able to find it. So that is what this is all about with their spare parts finder. Now let's go to the troubleshooter and we click there. Now you can click on any part of this and then enter into say what the possible problem could be. Uh, and so let's just click on the filter dryer. It's giving you several items right around the, the filter dryer, but we're going to go to just the filter dryer by itself. It says filter outlet side colder than the inlet side can be iced up. Let's click on that. So it's saying the filter dryer is clogged or the filter dryer is undersized, meaning that it, there's a restriction in there. And so you have a pressure drop. Anytime you have a pressure drop, then temperature drops. Let's just go to filter clogged. And it says the area is on the liquid line. System part is the filter dryer. The symptom is it's iced up. The possible cause, filter clogged. Replace the filter dryer. That's the solution. So it makes it very simple there. Now let's go to the sight glass. And if you see bubbles in the sight glass after the filter, Let's click on that. It says the pressure drop across the filter is too high. Filter dryer is clogged. Filter is undersized. Insufficient subcooling. Insufficient refrigerant charge. So it's a bunch of different possible problems that could be the issue there. So this is really nice for educating yourself. So whether you want to just practice with this yourself, maybe you have a, a car ride or something like that, you can just pop open the app and, and do some practice runs yourself to see if you know what the answer could be. Remember that insufficient subcooling could also mean that you have a low refrigerant charge. Now let's look at the magnetic tool. Right here, you can use this tool for detecting EMF. So meaning that you can, uh, if you put this, say your phone or iPad or something like that, right up near a solenoid, you can see if the solenoid has power to it or if it doesn't. So you'll see this rotate when the solenoid has power and then you'll see it stop rotating when it doesn't have power. Now, you can use this for any type of coil whatsoever, and you can also use it on something like a circulator pump, and you can see the actual direction of the rotation, so you'll know whether the circulate pump is on, and you'll see the rotation of that. Also, you have available the podcast, so it's just a lot of more educational material, so this is really nice. You have all these features all in one, and so you can just listen through and, and learn. Like right here, chapter 12, electricity, the absolute basics. So if you're hungry and you really want to learn, you're going to be listening to these different podcasts. Remember that the more knowledge you have, the more skills you're going to be able to apply, the more valuable you're going to be in the field. So that's it. That's the Dan Foss Ref Tools app. And the link for the website version is down in the description section below. And you can also find it over at the Google App Store and also the Apple App Store. Also, make sure to check out our website at acservicetech.com where we have a bunch of free tools there. We've got free calculators. We've got articles and tips. We spent a lot of time with those articles with custom images there. We have about right about 400 training videos, anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes long. We've got free quizzes for you to test your knowledge. And we also have our refrigerant charting and service procedures for air conditioning paperback book. We also have our ebook available there as well as a workbook with an answer key in order for you to test your knowledge once again so that you can grow in the field. We also have quick reference cards that you can use out in the field. They're made out of polystyrene, so they'll hold up very well. And on those quick reference cards, it has step-by-step -step troubleshooting for, for different problems with systems and for a frozen evaporator coil. It also goes over the, the methods for checking the refrigerant charge for superheat and for subcooling. It has a PT chart and also refrigerant weights. So you can check all that out over at acservicetech.com. We also have those products available over at amazon.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.